Hi everyone. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> How's it going? I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, it's so good to see you um, on this side of the show. And only you're watching, so I'm I'm happy that you're a guest. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's great to great to be on uh, this side of it too. So, yeah. Good times. Well, yeah. Are. Yeah. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, my name is Logan Esterling. Welcome to another episode of Meeting and Reading. My guest this week is Mark Cooney. Um, he is originally from Detroit, Michigan, but he's living in Limerick, Ireland. Um, he plays oboe with the Limerick Philharmonic and the Irish Symphonic Winds. Um, and he's currently earning his MA in Irish Music Studies at the University of Limerick. Um, so thank you for joining us, even though it's pretty late over there right now. Uh, it's nine o'clock. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. We're, yeah. we're having a good time. Good. Yeah. So figure, you know, now's a, now is a good time as any to, uh, you know, shape some cane, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nine o'clock on a Sunday. That's sometimes when, you know, <laughs> the best reads are made. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be making anything tonight. Just going to yeah. be shaping some cane. Nice. Yeah. Well, how's your day been? It's, it's been good. You know, Sundays are always really chill. Um, I did, uh, you know, the, the joys of, uh, of grad school of, yeah. <laughs> you know, doing this, uh, this weird thing that we call, you know, an academic prowess and endeavor. Uh, so I'm compiling things from my bibliography, um, for my thesis, um, first round of thesis submission. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So we'll see how it happens. And, you know, um, I, I was telling you that like my, so my, master, my master's is in Irish music studies, and that's yeah. a very general, broad term, as it were. Um, so basically, it's kind of looking at um, the development of the music, how it's kind of like get affected through the diaspora, you know, how are we, how are we perceiving it, and how has it changed? And then, you know, my crazy ass decided that I really like metal music. Mm. And <laughs> I'm like, you know what? there's a lot of Celtic folk out there and there are a lot of bands that are utilizing uh, these traditional instruments and, uh, you know, older styles of actual traditional singing, um, which is uh, it's, uh, known as Shane Nose, um, which is S-E-A-N-N-O uh, Fada S, -E -A -N -N -S uh, which literally means old style. Oh, wow. Okay. And there's a lot of these. Uh, so I, I decided that I wanted to talk about... Um, in my thesis, I want to talk about the uh, the the hybridity yeah. of Irish music, <laughs> how it translates into whatever. Um, so it's it's definitely like you know I've led I've led many different lives mm -hmm. uh, musically. You know, there's a lot of bi musicality yeah. that goes on. Like, you know, especially when I was like uh, you know starting out on the oboe, um, I came pretty late to the instrument. I was a I was a classical flute player up until I was 17. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but you know, it was like always funny. So like, you know, when I was in college, um, especially the first two years, it was like, you know, one weekend I'm throwing on, you know, the tight rock and roll pants and playing guitar in a death metal band. And the other, the other week, next weekend I'm playing, you know, Tchaikovsky. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so neat. It, how did, how did those two, like, how did those influence one another? You know, like, um, yeah. You know, I gotta tell you, um, metal uh, and classical music have so much in common. Mm. And it's, you know, I mean, you, you think about like, you know, what, what Liszt was doing. I mean, uh, you know, Beethoven's C minor piano sonata, you know, with Moonlight, you know, Moonlight Sonata and like, you know, the, the crazy beginning first, you know, virtuosic, you know, first, uh, first movement. Um, you put that through, you know, a Marshall half stack and a flying B and put some double kick pedals in there. It like, it hooks. <laughs> like, yeah. 
<laughs> and there, there's really there's some really cool, there's actually a couple bands who have covered it that way. And when you think about the the harmonic and melodic context, where mm -hmm. it's like literally these things are so interwoven and so well thought out, and the the, the amount of like skill that it takes to uh to master these you know these instruments and like the, the musicality behind it like really right. tr tr going into the mind's eye um they're i mean it's peanut butter and jelly you know like yeah. they, they go <laughs> together you know whiskey and cigarettes yeah <laughs> yeah that's so neat i think you know going between those two worlds um i'm sure you know was just um somewhat jarring, but also like um, freeing, you know, to be able to kind of express yourself in one way and then go express yourself in another completely different way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, and that was like, it's, it, it allows like a different perspective too. Yeah. To playing, um, you know, cause there's this, there's always this kind of idea of, you know, this, this romanticized idea of the classical musician where we're, you know, we're, you know, we're sitting there and we're pining away by candlelight and, you know, yeah. there's like this Rachmaninoff symphony going on in the background. Yeah. And, you know, we're delicate, sensitive artists. But when you look at like the other, the other flex of it, where it's like this, this almost like organic brutality, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you play Rite of Spring differently after you play Slayer, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's really, really cool just how like, you know, the, the two things kind of can mesh. And then, you know, there's a lot of, of, of beauty in it too. Um, but yeah, I, I could go on and on about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get into um, metal bands? I'm curious how that started. <laughs> oh God. Uh, you know, I, um, <laughs> Oh, it must have been like seven. Okay. Wow. That's young. Okay. Yeah. So like I was seven and my, uh, my grandma, my grandmother, God rest her. Um, she brought me into uh, a mire and said that, so they had like the place where you could like buy like cassette tapes and stuff, you know? Mm. And uh, she was like, you can, you can pick out two things that you want to listen to. And I was very much infatuated by the name Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mm -hmm. And so I picked out <laughs> Mozart. And then next to it was uh, uh, Black Sabbath's um, self title cassette. Nice. And <laughs> it was like, go home and put on, you know, Ronald Alaturka and then. Next thing I know, I'm listening to Paranoid, and I'd never heard anything like that. My dad was also very much into, like, rock and roll. You know, he was a long-haired hippie. Um, nice. <laughs> so, like, I grew up listening. Like, the part of the reason I wanted to play the flute was because my uh, my dad uh, had me listen to Jethro Tull as, uh, as a young kid. Mm, so, nice. Ian Anderson was a huge, uh, huge influence. Nice. Uh, That's so neat. That's such a good story. <laughs> you know, the, the cassettes. That's really neat. Yeah. Cool. It's good times. I'm yeah. For this thing to drop here. Nice. Well, yeah. speaking of reads, um, <laughs> what is your um, basic setup? So let's start with your cane brand and the gouge that you use. Yeah. So uh, the cane that I've been using is Loray. Um, I was using like Rigatti for a long time, but mm -hmm. uh, oh, hi, Laura. It's good to see you. Um, but yeah, I was using uh, Rigatti for quite quite some time, but I, I've switched over to Loray. Um, and nice. it, it worked great, you know. Um, my gouge I was, using, uh, was a 10 and a half um, or 10.5 um, RDG machine. Nice. But uh, because, you know, Irish weather is a thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've had to make some very drastic adjustments. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm curious if you could talk talk a little bit about those adjustments. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's still figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah but, um, you know, it, the Irish weather uh, is, is really, really funny where it, it rains all the time. It's green for a reason because mm -hmm. it rains all the time. <laughs> um, and it's, it's like a constant dampness and like cold, but like mm -hmm. in a very enjoyable way. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm, 
playing into the the fact that like i my ancestors came from this country so yeah. it's like i i like it you know like, yeah 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 um but yeah with that like i was telling you when we uh when we first were chatting like it was it was a very interesting thing where like you know i i left detroit uh end of august and detroit summers are just like super hot super humid and i processed all this cane and i get off you know get off the plane in dublin and it's you know 55 degrees and just piss and rain you know <laughs> you're like <laughs> oh, so i pull out you know I, I finally get settled and sorted mm. and um i pull out this cane and like 95 percent of it was complete garbage and i pull out my uh my gouger and I'm, like starting to like go through this and it's like it's all just like i mean it was terrible i had i had to go through three different types of shaper tips lord to finally wow. find something that works um for the longest time i was using uh robert sorton's shape so he was okay. the uh yeah I, are you familiar with robert sorton i'm not no so uh, you, I can't remember. I think I think it was Mary uh, studied with him at the at the Ohio State University. Anyway, so he was um, he was the assistant principal oboist of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, and then he picked up a tenure um, tenure uh, teaching uh, uh, position at the Ohio State University. And he, him, and his wife Bailey opened up a uh, uh, a reed business called uh, Sort and Reedworks, and okay. They 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 they've retired now, but they made a they made a, a shaper tip that nice, very very similar to um, a Mac Pfeiffer, yeah. And he, uh, you know, he was just a, a reed whiz. Like I, it was it was wild to watch this guy work because it was like blank on a on a on a, on a staple knife reed was done in a minute and he was playing a, a bird <laughs> i'm not even joking like, wow, fast crazy. Like, <laughs> like, I, I don't know like what voodoo magic he, yeah. <laughs> he did or who soul he sold to like, yeah it, it was wild uh to watch this guy and but i mean just just an incredibly sensitive player and an excellent excellent reed maker but anyway yeah so he uh he had this shape that he developed himself that was kind of like a mix of like a mac pfeiffer and like a mac Pl mac, mac plus okay nice um and it turned out that that was a little too wide. Okay. Um, so then I went to a, uh, a Gilbert minus one. And that was good. Uh, like it, 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 it made it so that like the higher notes were like not sagging as much. Um, That's good. <laughs> but it's still coming kind of with a lot of like resistance, you know? Gotcha. So, and then I got my Mac, my Mac one, like, okay. And, nice. And this is where this is. I'm. I'm not. I'm not messing with it. I, yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm. Doing now. <laughs> like, it seems to be okay. Um, nice. But yeah, uh, the uh, the staples I use. Uh, we have a pretty similar. We have a pretty similar setup. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm using uh, uh, Glatan uh, 47 um, nice. millimeter silver silver staples. Um, I also am a huge fan of the uh, Chudnow. Um, S staples. Okay, yeah, yeah, nice. So I really, I really like these. Uh, my my oboe is is an old uh, old Yamaha uh, nice. professional model. Um, so I'm hoping to be buying a Howard soon. Mm, nice. This thing, yeah, this thing that I have is just like it, it's <laughs> it's <seen> stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I totally understand. I just recently replaced my very old oboe. Um, so yeah, I, I relate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw I saw the picture. Now you 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 went through um, what did you get? You got you got a Larray, right? Yes, I got a, a Larray B series copy. Um, oh, very yeah, good. yeah, it's it's a beautiful instrument. Um, I feel really fortunate to have stumbled across it. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's uh compared to so I I had a Larray standard bore for ten years basically, <laughs> um and. Yeah, it's just it has something like twenty pins in it. It's 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 been through some stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you're yeah. like, oh, I'm I'm sorry. I wish I could hug you. I didn't mean it. I promise right. I didn't mean it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to find one of these other reads, one of these old reads because there was a there was an episode that you that you did where uh, I I don't remember who you were talking to, but he pulled out like a read from like his senior recital. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. 
and I, uh, I'm going through like my old read boxes. I actually found my senior recital read. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. oh man. I mean, like just, just the way that I, I've changed the way that I, I make things is yeah. really, really wild. Um, the, uh, so like pretty, pretty indicative, um, here, I'll actually, I'll compare one of mine to one of yours. This is the best lamp I've ever had, too. This thing is, like, so great. The switch is, has, like, warm lights. But anyway, um, I, don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see this. But so this is one of my, this is pretty standard for a read that I make. Um, it's, like, it's coming in about 70 millimeters, starting the tip at 66. Uh, I'm actually comparing it to one of yours here nice Almost yeah that same. looks quite similar yeah yeah so it was like you were a godsend when i was trying to figure things out yeah. <laughs> like, i'm so to... glad okay <laughs> and he's a handsome ginger uh, oh him. thanks <laughs> no, yeah, that's so sweet i'm glad that they worked out for you that's really good yeah. um and luckily the you know climate here is it's not quite like ireland but it is raining a lot right now so um yeah, yeah. somewhat similar so it's, yeah it's, it's pretty similar, which is good yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, basically, um, I'm using a Mac uh, Mac Pfeiffer shape, um, Lorray cane, Glau ten forty seven staple uh, silver staples. Um, I've been really, really digging my Gende knife lately. Okay. Um, kind of like breaking away from a landwell. Um, yeah. How are they so? So I was going to ask, how are they different from one of I'm not really familiar with the Jindy knives. So, uh, it's, it's the blade. Like, it's, I don't know, and the handle's different. Um, mm. so this is okay. the Jindy. Yeah. So, it, it just, it really, really keeps an edge. And i you know i i love landwells i think that they're great and i've been using them for years um but like this just just good seal you know nice and oh great you know um oh well, my my aunt and my mother hi mom hello <laughs> thanks for tuning in <laughs> um but i i've also been really digging the uh the beveled knives <laughs> okay yeah and yeah so this is a ando knife from tokyo Nice. And the, you know, my, my teacher, Brian Ventura, um, my primary teacher, Brian Ventura, he was at a assistant principal of West of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. And yes, very, very fussy. Um, he swore up and down um, by using beveled knives. Mm, okay. And I see why, because yeah. it's just like, <laughs> you, you don't have to guess the edge, you just, you do it. Yeah. yeah makes sense that is nice yeah <laughs> i've been using the ferrillo knife start sharpening system for a while now and it's i've tried some other systems um but something about the ferrillo system is just efficient easy um and it's just something i can always rely on you know it's always going to produce a burr which is great yeah which is at the, at, the, at the end of the day that's the most important thing right you know? right yeah and making sure that you're keeping keeping the edge on it it was, uh, what was it the uh, the three the three things to French cooking? Yeah, uh, three three important things to French cooking is uh, butter, butter, and more butter. And <laughs> Love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the key to making a good read is a sharp knife, sharp knife, and a sharp knife. Yes, <laughs> sharp and sharp and sharp and just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, be yeah, I, I agree with uh, Anish there. Uh, Bevel yeah. is, is really easy, um, even without the Perillo. You just uh, so I mean, I'm using Japanese water stones too. Nice. Um, so that, that that seems pretty common these days for a lot of people. But yeah, it's a uh, it's been it's been a wild thing, um, just trying to get through it. And actually, one of the one of the best tools that I that I picked up um, is this guy. Oh, what is that? So this is a uh, a jeweler's roller, right? Mm. So it's very, very fine. And what I'll do is I'll take the cane and kind of work at it from like upside down. Um, and to get rid of any like burrs or any uh, like hitches. Yeah. Literally just roll this over the dry, the dry cane. Wow. And it like 
takes it right out and it's it's great like this That's is awesome. to like to to make the transition between the you know the tip and the and the heart you can really really get in there and just kind of roll it over um and even like on the sides where people are using sandpaper um yeah. this is almost finer than sandpaper and you can just literally take it to the side of the reed and you know nice and what is it called and where can you get it <laughs> i'm so curious uh, it's, 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 a, it's a jeweler's roller okay um so if you went to any type of like jewelry store where they like fix rings um you know you could ask them where they got it i'm sure you know the uh, the world of amazon as much as i dislike yeah, <laughs> yeah. paying the billionaires um right <laughs> you, find them, you know i'm sure you can find them on amazon but yeah it's, it's just a jewelry roller um and they're, yeah. they're, they're and they have like very there are differing ones um they're very like fine ones and it's like they're really really awesome and it, nice. it made just the biggest difference in my playing um and my, the consistency of my reads nice i'll have to get one that will be yeah, fun to try yeah yeah have you tried the um what are they called the uh dang it i'm drawing a blank uh it's like the let me see if i can find mine it's like a <laughs> little um like it's supposed to be a replacement for a reed knife that like doesn't get dull. Um, like the magic bullet, that's what it's called. The magic. The magic bullet. No, what are um, you talking about? <laughs> they're like uh, I'm drawing a blank on their name, but they're available on like uh, on mid on mid Midwest's website or or most music suppliers. Um, but I'm curious if it's similar to that in sort of its feel. Um, and that like it doesn't lose its um, sharpness so quickly, right? Um, yeah, I wonder. Um, I mean, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, oh, the Reed Geek. <laughs> so it's it's called the Reed Geek bullet. bullet. Yeah. Romeo Dell for the win. There you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'm not familiar with that actually. Um, so I'd be I'd be curious to see what that's all about. Yeah, I've tried one before. Uh, it definitely is not like the the same edge is like a knife and you can't get quite the same feeling you know as when, when you're scraping but it, it definitely is sharp enough to scrape on a on a reed um and do something so and it's you don't have to check it um in your luggage when you're flying so it's great for travel um oh, that makes that a lot easier you know, that would have been a lot a lot more a lot more useful uh, about six months of there yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I, tell you, I really enjoyed like the the people that you've had on here. Um, oh, awesome! And I, I really, like it's, it's 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 just you know it's just so nice to be able to know that you're not alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I know it sounds very bleak, um, but you know just not being able to not being able to play. And not being able to meet people in in the you know in that circle. Yeah, definitely. And you feel like you're feel like you're the only oboist in the world. Yeah, definitely. And it's already like so um, lonely, and like you're already in such a like your your own little world of struggle. Even when things are normal, right? Um, yeah. And like you already always feel like you know you're you're the only oboe player who's struggling with reads, and everyone else has it figured out, right? But that's really not the case. So. Um, no. It's, yeah. Middle Lakes Company, right? <laughs> um, Especially at the bottom of a bottle. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've really enjoyed having guests on, and I'm glad that you've enjoyed watching and tuning in. Um, I really appreciate nice. your engagement, and um, yeah. Of course. Did you get your chartreuse? I did get it. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but. Yeah, I did get it. So. <laughs> At some point, I'll have to try it. Oh, so that's another thing that you haven't, that I didn't mention, but you are a, like, world-class bartender. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm a master coctologist. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, like, you know, different different lives. Um, so yeah. I was um, very, very much immersed in uh, hospitality world, um, 
and you know uh, entered in a lot of national competitions um, for bartending. Did very very well in a couple of them. Um, and yeah, they, they gave me a what is it? Hold on a second. Let me get right here. The United States Bartender Guild. They gave me oh, that's, that's a picture of my dog. Sorry. Oh. Uh, <laughs> gave me this nice this nice thing saying I am a spirits professional. So, wow, nice. That's yeah. awesome. December, what was it? No, September 2015. Wow. Another life. Nice. And what, what brought you to that? I'm curious how you got into that. Uh, job security, money. Yeah, <laughs> fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, actually, it's, it's, much, it's, it's much deeper than that. Um, you know, I, after I finished my, my, my bachelor's, um, you know, I went, I went down the route where I was just gigging all the time and, was you know trying to prepare for auditions and i started really really hating music Mm. i i I just i i couldn't stand looking at the oboe i was so tired of like conductors telling me i wasn't playing properly Mm. (laughs) and it's you know that my my beethoven wasn't you know was wasn't classical enough that my mozart was too romantic x y and z you know whatever and I just, you know, I, I thought about it and I'm just like, you know, there's gotta be, I, I, I can't, I can't have this part that like was my, my mighty liberator. I can't hate this part of my personality. So I, uh, I put the oboe away for a while, about two years, like didn't touch it. Wow. And, um, I went into this bar called, called the sugar house in Detroit and it was it's like the original craft cocktail bar in Detroit. And it was just like this sexy, dark, mysterious place. And like you're looking at like, you know, looking at the back bar and it's just like, you know, what the heck is Kashasa? Oh my god. And they're like setting things on fire and shaking this, you know, and like <laughs> it was it was so cool. Just yeah. so cool. And I uh I was working at a rest a vegetarian restaurant at the time and the owner's son um was working at this at this bar and i was like you know what like if i'm gonna be a bartender i'm, I'm just I'm, I'm gonna do it the right way like i'm yeah. gonna learn so i uh i went and applied and i uh worked as a bar back and i did everything but make drinks for about a year wow so you just got to observe and that's awesome <laughs> yeah sure yeah we'll call it that i plunged a lot of toilets <laughs> cleaned up a lot of vibes. oh okay fun okay <laughs> I got set on fire. wow okay that was set on fire. what um, happened how did that happen <laughs> uh, so um there are these you know those those pumps for uh olive oil mm. like you put like you, you can spray it like think like the mm, yes pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah so what we would do is we would take um like overproof rum, like Rain Nephew or Angostura bitters, and we use that in this atomizer to impart it in, inside of the glass. Or with you know it being overproof, it acts like a flamethrower, and literally sprays fire <laughs> and hot with death at you. Um, and it makes like a really cool effect if you're like brulee sugar on top of a drink or something like that, right? So I was bar backing and I was clearing out a, a glass rack and my one friend goes, Hey, I got to tell you, I got to tell you something. I'm like, yeah, what's going on? It was a particularly heinous Friday night, mind you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just, I think we we're on like hour nine. I'm just getting our dicks kicked in. You know, just, <laughs> Holy Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're built. Um, and uh, my friend comes up to me, he goes, Hey, I got to tell you something. I'm like, yeah, what's up? And he goes, you're doing a good job. I'm like, Oh, you know what? That's so nice. And next thing I know, my butt's on fire because my other guy came up behind me and oh my gosh wow yeah <laughs> literally set you on fire <laughs> okay <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah. that's scary yeah it's, you know it feels scary. I've, yeah I, again i've lived, I've lived, a, lived a couple different lives yeah definitely yeah that's so neat <laughs> yeah, you know it came it came from like i guess it's the same you know with the same way with you know music where it's like everything you do is part of the greater picture part of the greater symphony Mm -hmm. you know and the way that you move behind the bar the way that you are shaking the knowledge and like the culture and the heritage and the history that every single bottle has yeah is really really mesmerizing and then you look at like you know what these recipes were 
where this was like such a viable and incredible cultural thing up until prohibition. Yeah. And it's, it's like, you know, you think about what in what like celebrated our bicentennial, bicentennial, the United States celebrated bicentennial in 1976. Right. Um, so in the 250 years that the colonized United States has been a country, you think about like, what have we done culturally to impact the world? Well, it's not much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, aside from very obvious hate-filled things, but like, if you think, what is the cultural brevity? It's like, we literally, we have baseball, we have rock and roll, we got blues, and we have the cocktail. Mm. Those are the four major things <laughs> that the United States have given the world. <laughs> and Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. <laughs> Would you stop? Sorry, my dog. Here. That's okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you don't like Leonard Bernstein. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, sh- hey, I know he's, he's more of a bone bone kind of guy. Here, um, but yeah, so uh, I guess it was, it was just the the craft and like making. You know, I I make all my own syrups. I do all my own infusions. I make my own bitters. Wow. I make my own amaro. Um, and just like knowing, like how to do this stuff and the difference between an old Tom gin and, you know, a Navy strength gin, like, again, what is cachaça? Like, yeah. I'd never heard about rum before. This is wild. Which the definition of rum, that's a really, really funny thing. Liquor laws are hilarious. Um, mm-hmm. But the definition of rum, do you know what it is? I do not. <laughs> it's anything that looks, tastes, or smells like rum that comes from sugar cane. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Really tough that one out, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> very descriptive. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, even like knowing, like figuring that stuff out. I'm gonna be terrible and use my knife to shape cane. Don't oh, do those kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, just just knowing like where all that stuff came from, and then like pre-prohibition cocktails that were almost lost in time. You know, like learning how to make a Sazerac, learning how to make, you know, a blue blazer. Uh, like what is a corpse reviver, corpse reviver number two? Um, you know, that, that like, what were the corpse revivers in terms of history? You know, like mm. it's, it's really, really kind of cool. So yeah. And uh, you know, the money wasn't bad either. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. And you know, the, 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 the paid, the paid trips to Mexico to go hang out at uh, Hacienda Patron and. Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Sign me up. That sounds like fun. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. I drank a lot of tequila <laughs> for free, which was wonderful. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, then I then I remembered that, you know, it was like one day I just kind of like looked at my dusty old logo case and I'm like, I wonder what Morgan's doing. That's my, my Ovo's name. Nice. Um, <laughs> I wonder what, what Morgan's doing. So I fashioned together some, you know, some lame excuse of a read and <laughs> so they're playing again i'm like oh that's right this instrument's awesome nice and i started you know start listening to like recordings and like you know it was uh it was albrecht meyer and the the recording he did of the schumann three romances with, with helen grimode nice that one i i was listening to it and then like i just saw my oboe and i just like you know it's like that scene from chaplin where like the cane and the hat like start dancing around yeah. <laughs> and, I was like, oh. and you know hearing, hearing mr meyer and mr mode playing and just i mean just an exquisite exquisite aural poetry between the two yeah you know just incredible incredible musicianship that's awesome and so what brought you to i was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your transition to ireland um and kind of studying irish music and how that's um impacted your oboe playing yeah, um, so I visited Ireland about six years ago for the first time, and i i had I had been gone I had been getting into traditional music, like going into session, like going to sessions and playing the flute, playing my tin whistle, um, and learning you know these songs, right? Mm. And when I originally, when I first came here, it was, yeah, it was for a vacation, but I also auditioned um, at the Royal Irish Academy of Music in Dublin um, for uh, my master's. Mm-hmm. And it went well. I 
they just it was expensive <laughs> yeah very, very, very expensive um but yeah like uh i just kept on missing it and you know it's it's one of those things where i got here and my you know my 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 family my family history is irish uh cooney is it's really really wild to see my last name on like 500 year old buildings um yeah <laughs> you know, and like you know my coat of arms is like in on places and you know stuff like that and it was yeah, just so uh but like when i when i first got here i was just like oh my god like i'm home mm, that's and, awesome and, you know you kind of take root and the sky looks uh the sky was just like hanging very very low and like you're breathing in this, this air that like it's it was just incredible and like yeah it was like i'm home I'm, I'm where I belong. So during the quarantine, I was laying there, you know, wide awake and unemployed. Uh, <laughs> what am I going to do with my life? You know, bars are closed. I, I don't know. And I was just like, you know, I miss Ireland. And I've been wanting to go back. And I really like this music. I wonder if there's something there. And I went down this, uh, this rabbit hole. And it's uh, the Irish World Academy is where I is is the music school I'm, I'm in. It's part of the University of Limerick. And uh, yeah, I just applied and I sent an audition of me playing, you know, the tin whistle and the flute. And next thing I know, they're like, hey, you're accepted. Um, we think you'd be a great candidate for, so it's myself and five of the people in my program. So it's very, very small. Wow, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you know, we, we like your, uh, your scholarly work. We like your musicianship. Um, we think you'd be a great fit. Uh, do you want to do this remotely? And I was like, nope. So I sold everything I owned, uh, and I moved here with four suitcases and my dog. Nice. <laughs> That's so and awesome. A dream. Yes, and a dream. yes. <laughs> that is the most important part. <laughs> nice. That's so neat. I think that's such a cool transition, like, you know, mid-pandemic to to get up and move, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> across so much. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's, a, different, it's a different world. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, Classical music isn't really a thing here. Mm, okay. Um, you know, it's 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 viewed as like it's it's the music of the colonizer. <laughs> you know, like, yes, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, you'll be you'll be sitting in you know you'll be sitting in a pub and you know there's a you know a seventy year old man sitting there with his you know with his pint playing the squeeze box and you know he ah uh, hi Ann um, <laughs> hi Ann <laughs> but you know so he's sitting there playing the squeeze box and I mean just flying. And like doing all this insane technical work, but you put you know you put five lines on a piece of page on a piece of paper and put a dot on one of them. He's like, I don't know, like what what is that? <laughs> so it's, it's very very interesting. Like again, like that kind of that bi musicality of like there is this very interesting part of the tradition mm. where it, it's resonating and you hear these songs and you just, it's like this almost like spiritual, ethereal experience. Um, that's very, very, very different than classical music. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, 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 it's cake and pie, you know, they're both great, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting. And it, it, it's, it's, it's definitely provided me a different way of playing the oboe yeah um where it's no longer this instrument that is a double reed that i'm trying to make sing like this is the human voice singing without words and it has to be this way mm. um you know especially when you're when you hear like shane knows slow air singing mm. and you know i i was th i was thinking about it and i'm just like or a slow air playing. And I'm just like, you know, if there was an instrument that could actually emulate what these people are doing, that isn't from the island of Ireland, it's the oboe. It's the only I one that. that has the breadth of, of dynamic range, the, the, um, the very uh, intimate mm -hmm. type of idea, you know? Nice. So, I love and that. It's a beautiful yeah. computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I really do enjoy it here. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to visit. I, my, oh, yeah. I, yeah. My brother's been and he sent us many pictures. Um, 
and oh, now I'm <laughs> I want it so bad to go. Yeah. You'll you'll get them. Yeah. It's it's and it'll be well worth it and it it'll just be one of those things where, you know, they'll they'll look at you when you get off the plane and say, Welcome home. Where have you been? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll fit right in. <laughs> Yeah. What really blows, so one of the oboists I, I, I did meet here, um, she plays uh, trad, like traditional Irish music in sessions, but she plays the oboe in them, and it blows oh, wow. people's mind. Um, <laughs> they're like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, what is this gobshite? You know, like. <laughs> but That's it's uh, it's really, really interesting to kind of see how people listen to it and like take on like the, they're like oh we have, we don't know what the oboe is we don't know um so it's it's pretty funny yeah that's neat um one other thing we we talked about in our call was that you know you play next to a lot of um short scrape players i was curious you know how your experience playing with them um playing on those reeds um yeah how do you become a section um across <laughs> read styles yeah, <laughs> uh, it's it's very very interesting because um playing next to somebody that's playing on a short scrape read um will they like look at you and they're like oh you're you're you sound really really bright and i'm like no 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 you do <laughs> um, you, just, you have to find a way to like make it work and i i think it it does it does require more horizontal listening mm. and really focusing in on what is the musical idea not not the timbre not the you know the color that the individual is making but how do i actually construct the the, the full musical landscape and you got to you know you got to play in tune and you yeah. got to be able to blend into this stuff and also still enjoy it <laughs> you know? yeah. like, so um and it i i mean i i was so weird um i was so weird in the beginning stages of my read making like i i made like sh like short scrape american reads. hybrid things yeah, yeah hybrid stuff. And, like, it worked i don't know how and, yeah like, it sounded good and like looking back at some of these things i'm just like jesus christ what was i <laughs> Yeah, you know, but it, I mean, so now it's I've, I've definitely gotten much more reserved and like actually honed things in. Um, but I suppose like a lot of it, a lot of the, a, a lot of my influences were European oboists to begin with, though. Mm -hmm. So I always, yeah. I always kind of sound like that. Um, you know, again, like you know, Albrecht Meyer was a huge, you know, huge influence on the way that I that I like to play, and uh, the, the the other fellow from. Uh, from London Symphony, what's his name? He has the hair. I don't remember. Um, but you know, also just just great players. Um, yeah. Ingo, whatever his name is. Um, all these all these European players were just fantastic. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Like you know, I, I John Mack is great, and mm. you know, I, I love me some Alan Vogel. Oh yes, uh, he's great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Alan Vogel, what a gem. <laughs> Yeah, he's a treat. <laughs> yeah, truly. But yeah, so I guess it was just uh it was just kind of like interesting to adjust. Yeah. Um and you you, you got you got to think about blending just constantly and it's it's all these other parts of the brain that you didn't think you need to use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so interesting. Go ahead. Oh, oh, it's interesting what you mentioned that like they will call your playing bright and you know you call their playing bright and it's like our concepts of bright and dark and like a good tone versus a bad tone is so drastically different um, you know, in these two worlds. And that's, the, and that's the thing where it's like I always hated the the adjectives bright and dark when talking about like it, it's it's so myopic like, you yeah. know, it's like, you mean to tell me you didn't read a book and those are the only things that you know how to do to describe things you hooked right. up on it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Here's a circle of paper and a ball. Perhaps you'd like to bounce it. Right. Um, <laughs> uh. 
but yeah, I, I think like, you know, it, it really does require you to think about all of the sounds, all the overtones that the oboe is making. And what is, what is, I mean, when you're, when you're playing Beethoven six next to a, you know, a European player, you got to be the bird. Yeah. You have to be walking through, walking through the forest. You know, it's, it's really, really important and put yourself in that mindset yeah so i i, I don't know if that <laughs> if that's no it does yeah <laughs> no yeah, yeah that, and that's fascinating yeah <laughs> mm. have you played next to a european oval player before i have not no um i've never really even tried but besides the leger read that i got i've never really tried like a real european scrape read before um yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, how do I mean, they feel different compared to what what you play on uh they're harder <laughs> like, mm. they're just like you know you're doing all this biting and like you know the embouchure is like so different and like i i like very very easy reads mm. like i uh between you and me and i'm very very happy to say this um i did quit smoking but i was a smoker for a long nice. time mm. and i finally quit after a long time of smoking yeah. um so i had to make reads that were very very easy for me to play on mm. um and circular breathing was my friend um, nice <laughs> but yeah when I, first tried to, when I first tried to play a european read i was like i mean it was like blown between two bricks you know yeah like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you play an entire concerto with this right You're yeah um so yeah it's it's definitely it's it's its own interesting thing but like that that's the the other part where i you know i would have a european player play on my read and mm. they're like they would blow right through it and it would like collapse the thing and they're like what is this i feel like i'm going to break your instrument <laughs> yeah <It's> like, <laughs> okay. that's so interesting yeah Well, what is Ireland like right now? How shut down is it? Uh, very shut down. So we are in a uh, full-scale level five lockdown. Wow. For nine weeks. Um, I can't leave outside of five kilometers of my house. Um, all bars, restaurants, hospitality sectors, everything that's not essential is, uh, is, is closed. Wow. <laughs> um, the thing about it is they the country's just too small mm. to even mess with it and it's like you know so like to put in perspective three of this country can fit into one michigan where i'm from wow yeah <laughs> yeah right so it's i mean it's just it's just wild so they 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 really they really really can't um mess around with this and uh <laughs> basically from what i'm gathering um and what i what i'm understanding is when they reopen that's that that's the way it's going to be but they just they got to do it the right way um you know pfizer vaccine is getting distributed but then there are some other other variants that are popping up from the uk and you know you, you got to remember that it's it's a segregated country still mm -hmm. So, you know, where I'm at in the Republic, um, you know, they have to deal with like the border up in the north. It's part of the UK that just went through, you know, leaving the EU. <laughs> like, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. But, you know, so it's one, it's one country, but split between two countries. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, what do you do with people trying to get back and forth? So there, there was a, a weird transmission that was going on. Um, Luckily, it's at the point now where the cases are slowly declining and they will be releasing a new living with COVID. The government will be, uh, will be releasing a new living with COVID plan on Tuesday, apparently. So okay. Shana Fall is, is doing whatever. Um, so it'll be, it will be interesting to see what they have to say. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not so bad <laughs> just because like, you know, I walk one direction and I'm like in the most beautiful forest like i mean it's it's i i live in the shire <laughs> like, okay <laughs> that sounds magical <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know the fairies are real yeah <laughs> um, but yeah so it's like uh it's interesting to 
to be able to be in a place like this where it's well, the world is ending, but at least it's gorgeous. But I really, you know, like I want to go see Cork and I want to like go and travel this country. And also, it's like Europe is at my doorstep essentially. So, like, you know, it, it right. would take me 45 minutes to get to London. Hmm. You know, amazing. so I can, yeah. I can go to Howard and buy my, buy my oboe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, like an hour and a half to get to France. Wow. Paris or something. Yeah, so it's really, really ideal when the world isn't burning. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be great to like eventually, you know, when the world does open back up, you'll have this whole, <laughs> you'll have been there for a while and you'll get to finally explore more, oh, yeah. um, which will be nice. I mean, I was, I was able to before, I mean, I'd gone to like the Cliffs of Moor and, uh, you know, the, the Burren and stuff like that. And like, I, 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 I'd able, I was able to go see some of the sites. Um, this is trash. Um, oh. You know, so it, that's pretty cool. But there's, there's also a lot of stuff that I, I do want to see still. And I don't know, just being able to just hang out at a pub and have a Guinness and like sit by a fire. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the little things. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing any um like any metal playing at all while you're while you've been in Ireland? Are you still doing some of that? Metal? Yeah. Like Hail Satan metal? Um yes. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm actually in the in the process of um so unfortunately I had to sell my amps and my guitars. Mm. when I got here um, or before I got here just because it was too much it would have been just too much money they yeah. all went to good homes um, it, that was very very difficult for me to do and I'm still kind of heartbroken about it um, yeah. but I mean uh, <laughs> thanks for bringing it up Logan yeah I'm so sorry um, <laughs> no, I'm actually in the, I'm at, in the, in the process of uh, rebuying a rig Okay. so I'm uh, buying a, a, a PV uh, 6150 um, which is like the amp for for the metal. Nice. Um, and there are a couple. Uh, I'm I'm looking at a Solaris. So, so Solaris is a really really wonderful guitar brand um, that I highly 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 recommend to all of you people who play guitar. Um, if you're looking for something that is not going to break your bank and also plays well, Solaris is great. Um, I was a Schecter player for a long time. Um, but anyway, they have these these great seven string guitars and these great barit baritone guitars, and I am in love with them. And I actually will be ordering them on Tuesday. Oh, nice! Congrats! That's exciting. Very exciting. Yes. So I'll have to I'll have to post uh, some stuff. But yeah, it's you know it's definitely like <laughs> it's it's a it's a different kind of uh, different kind of personality. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And so it was always, you know, it was always really funny going into like auditions and, uh, you know, going to like obo read days and, or, you know, obo days or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, coming in with a, a beard and like I had an eyebrow piercing and like, <laughs> you know, a mohawk and like slipknot t shirts and like whatever. And like here I, here I am, you know, and it's like, oh, and today we're playing Mozart. <laughs> and yeah, like, What's that. going on? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's so, so neat though that you found like um, a voice in both of those worlds, right? Because it's so rare. I feel like to find you know someone who can go between both both of those worlds. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. you got you got to shake hands with yourself with yourself once in a while, and it takes you yeah. know it's it's I mean it's it, it's very very strange. Um, like the you know how how you perceive what you're hearing and how you want to convey it. Um, especially when, the, when those two different things. But I mean, that, again, it's like any person who is a musician is doing themselves a disservice if they pigeonhole themselves into one genre of playing. You know, it's it's like, listen, plug the oboe into a Marshall half stack and throw a distortion pedal on it. It sounds yeah. great. It's <laughs> yeah. super cool. You know, yeah. uh, play along with Metallica. Like, you know, it's... Yeah. Or we'll pull up like a, a, you know, some <laughs> blues... Uh, <laughs> track on youtube and like improv yeah. along just try it out yeah 
Yeah, that's actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing when you, when you get out of those, you know, those, those certain genres. Cause I mean, you know, our, our entire playing career is us like going through the body makeup and how many times are we playing combo? <laughs> how yeah. many times are we playing Shike 4? You know, and it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> like there's gotta be more to, more to life than this. Like, right. what is good? you know? Yeah. So I, I guess like embracing, embracing that side is just, you know, it, it, it's so incredibly liberating and so wonderful when you finally can do it. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, and you, you praise Odin and the All Father or whatever. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, Makes sense. Yeah. No, that's great. I, f I feel like so many of us get lost and, you know, we lose that the reason why we fell in love with music, right? Um, that like exactly. connection and, and um, yeah, just that the ability to be in the moment, right? Um, and sometimes we lose that when, when, when we get so focused on being, you know, this next great oboe player or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think Remember that's great Hillary advice. Sorry, what? Remember what Hillary Hahn said? Mm. we call it playing for a reason yes okay i like that that's a good quote yeah, yeah. yeah we have to keep doing that be the child yeah. on the swing setting yeah <laughs> yeah well we have a few more minutes i had one final question for you um since you have like come you, you've taken some you took some time away from the oboe i'm curious what advice you have for someone who is in a similar boat maybe they've taken some time away from the oboe but they want to get back involved what would you suggest they do or, or just some practical advice for them yeah uh trust the process and be patient with yourself um and don't spend all your time in the practice room there's a mm -hmm. really beautiful natural world out, out there and it's you can't be a good musician if you don't live a life mm -hmm. so trust the process Amen. and <laughs> go, out, go, go out there and live you know yeah nice yeah that's great advice mm -hmm. Cool. Well, Mark, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Um, um, all the way from Ireland. <laughs> um, it's yeah. great to chat with you. Um, yeah. And hear about, you know, your very diverse music career and path and interests. Um, yeah, it was really inspiring to hear you talk. So thank you. My pleasure, Logan. Thank you for having me on this wonderful show. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Looking forward to it, my friend. All right. Bye. Long and prosper. <laughs>